May I greet you, family of God, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the gift of life, and we wish to welcome you all into our visual service for today. And before we proceed, as our tradition, we are going to light the candles um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we light this candle in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we have an open Bible to indicate that all our messages are based on Scripture. And friends, our call to worship shall be taken uh, from the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 66, and we'll be reading from verses 1 to verse 4. And our viewers at home, they can follow us, and it reads us. Shout for joy to the God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make praise, make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises to your name. And come, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you uh, this morning. We thank you, King of Glory, for the gift of life. We thank you, Father God Almighty, for the gift also of this day, which is a day, Almighty God, that no one has ever lived in it. But your grace has ushered us into this day. Almighty God, we understand fully that there is nothing that we can ever achieve in this life, King of Glory, if you are not with us. And for that reason, we want to invite you into this, into this service, that you may guide and direct us through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may hear you speaking to us, Almighty God, and meeting all of us, King of Glory, at our point of need. We know, Father God Almighty, that at times we sin against you knowingly and unknowingly. And King of Glory, for that reason, our Father, we plead for mercy. We pray, Almighty God, that you will forgive us of all the sins we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, that the blood of the Lamb of God will wash, cleanse, and purify us inside out in Jesus' name, so that whatever we do here, Almighty God, will be acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Friends, our scripture reading for today shall be taken from the Old Testament and also from the New Testament. And in the New, in the Old Testament, the text shall be taken from the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 2, and we'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 4. And it reads thus. When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon his son, I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, act like a man. And observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go and that the Lord may keep his promise to me if your descendants watch how they live and if they walk faithfully before me with all their hearts and soul you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David 
and his rule was firmly established. The second scripture reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 6, and we'll be reading from verses 1 to verse uh, 58. But then, uh, due to limitations of time, we are going to be just picking those scriptures that we'll be using in our message. And verse 51 reads thus, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Verse 52. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise them up at the last day. And lastly, verse 58. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Here ends the reading of his word. Amen. May we bow our heads to pray briefly. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Once again, brethren and viewers at home, may I once again greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is a pleasure for me to be sharing this message from the pulpit of Wesley. It has been a while, but we thank God that he has uh, created this opportunity that we may share this message with you. And if we may try, uh, maybe to perhaps to give a title to this message, we'll say, it is a word for the remnant. A word for the remnant. You will attest to this fact that, you uh, know, there is just so much that is happening in the world. And as a preacher, I feel persuaded to provide a word for the remnant. And in this instance, the remnant, we are referring to a small minority of people who will remain faithful to God and be saved after some form of uh, move of God. Let me say maybe perhaps after some form of a, an unpleasant move of God upon the earth. So it's a message that is meant for the remnant. As most people seem to show some interest in the last words of a departing person, they want to have some form of, um, you know, I, I, I needed to have uh, some form of assurance that this message will stay with us. And with that, I chose to adapt the words of a departing servant of God for today's message. Usually when the message is heard that someone has passed on, the close associates or family members will be eager to know the last words, last words spoken at the point of departure or at the point of death. Perhaps for some, it's for the most obvious reason. That maybe there is something left uh, 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 for them from the possessions of uh, the person who is departed. However, with the pro uh, pro uh, protocols in place to keep the spread of COVID-19, we are now deprived of the opportunity to receive the last words from our departed loved ones. But all is not lost, people of God as the scriptures do provide those staying behind with the words of life to help us to navigate the unfamiliar terrain as created by the global pandemic. Coming to the text that we have read, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 2, where we got our text for today, King David, whom God 
attested to be the man after his own heart, is at the point of death, and he gives a charge or his last words to Solomon, his son, saying, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. I'm about to go the way of all the earth. And Job in chapter 16, verse 22, he describes the way of all the earth as the path or the journey of no return. And in this instance, David the king says to his son, Be strong, act like a man, observe what the Lord your God requires, walk in obedience to him, <clears throat> and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written <clears throat> in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. And that the Lord may keep his promise to me if your descendants watch how they live. And if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. So the text tells us that then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father, his father David, and his rule, as shown in the scriptures, was firmly established. And going further now into uh, the third chapter of the same book, 1 Kings chapter 3, a few uh, verses there, verse 5 says, And at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask whatever you want me to give you. Verse 9. So Solomon gives a response. So give your servant a discerning, listening, understanding heart or wisdom to enable me to be able to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. The Lord was pleased that Solomon has asked for this. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Verse 13, Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands, as David your father did, I will give you a long life. You know, it's comforting to hear this in an era like this when there is COVID-19. That God still promises the remnant long life in the midst of the global pandemic. There is still hope for our future. Hallelujah. From the text we see that what Solomon has asked, he asked for a discerning heart, a listening heart, the ability to be able to listen. Because the God we serve, he always speaks and he's expecting people to listen and also have understanding so that they do exactly or they put to action whatever he tells us to do. And this brings us now to, to, to further know um, Dissect the meaning of discernment. The Oxford Learner's Dictionary defines discernment as the ability to judge well in simpler forms. The ability to judge well. And the English preacher Charles Spurgeon, who is known to some of us, he goes further to say discernment is not just knowing the difference between right and wrong, but it is knowing the difference between right and almost right. Knowing the difference between right and almost right. And in these end times, 
which are proving to be very difficult to navigate. We need to know exactly what the Lord God requires of us. The ability to discern will help us as believers to decipher information, whatever information that you receive, because the earth is just, you know, there is this term that they use in information science to say there is information overload, which is now turning against us to work against us. When maybe perhaps we are supposed to be taking the COVID vaccines that are supposed to help us, we are busy feeding ourselves with the false information, the fake news. The vaccination drives are going extremely very slow in our African continent. Perhaps because our people are not used to the truth. Even the gospel truth, they don't know. They are quick to believe what is not true. They believe lies. Yet if we have got the grace to discern, to decipher information, you can easily tell, this is true, it's going to help us. This is from the devil. These are the lies that are meant to destroy us further. In Micah 6, verse 8 and 9, we get a clarification of what our Lord God requires of us. Micah 6 says, we ought to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humble with God. Hallelujah. In this life, it is always advisable to humble yourself before God and not the other way around. In many instances, sometimes you'll be praying, you'll be listening to some people praying when you are done, of course, with your own prayer. And you'll be hearing people making the prayer to say, Lord, humble me. That's a very wrong prayer point. We should not ask God to humble us because once God humbles us, you won't be able to stand that. It is best that you humble yourself. And avoid being humbled by God. Because that one, no one will ever desire such. We need to walk in obedience to God and His Word. And keep His decrees and commands. In times like these, when I said, I want to talk to the remnant. Those who are going to remain. Because you, when you look at the horizon, the slow pace at which our African countries are taking the vaccine, you see that you are still going to lose a lot of people. So I want to talk to those who are going to remain behind. Perhaps those who are going to, you know, take the vaccines. Because even the scientists who have produced them, I believe the wisdom came from God. But still, it is still difficult for some of us to believe that. Hallelujah. So we need to walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses and the entire scriptures. The text promises, promises are, are that if we do as instructed, we will prosper in all that we do and wherever we go. Galatians 5 verse 22 further assist us with the expectations God has um, uh, uh, about us. The things that God expects us to do. Galatians 5.22 records all the fruit of the Spirit that God expects of us. Hallelujah. The fruit of love. The fruit of joy. The fruit of peace. Living in peace with all people. The fruit of forbearance. The fruit of patience. The fruit of kindness. The fruit of goodness. Being good to people. Not only to your own relatives. Not only to those of the household of faith. But to all people of God. We ought to be good. To show the fruit. To bear the fruit of goodness. The fruit of faithfulness. Having faith in God. In the midst of this pandemic, continue to have faith in God. He is faithful. We survived the first wave. We survived the second wave. We are also surviving the third wave. Even if there is going to be a fourth wave, if we have faith in God, we are still going to survive it. If we also cooperate with those in authority, when they say, go for a vaccine, if you qualify, go for it. 
Hallelujah. Because the fact of life is, when we've got the wisdom of God, the information provided us, the evidence out there, over 4 million people have succumbed to COVID-19. Yet you are not hearing of so many that have succumbed because of the vaccines. Then you see that we just lack wisdom. Hallelujah. We need the wisdom of God to navigate the unfamiliar terrain. The fruit of gentleness, the fruit of self-control in times like this. You know, when we are living in a place where we are now and again, you know, there's so much stress, depression and the like, some of us we tend to lose, you know, self-control. The word of God says, make sure you bear the fruit of self-control. As I draw nearer the end, we read the book of uh, the Gospel according to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, Jesus here refers to himself as the bread of life. And he's saying to the listeners, to the Jews, if you'll eat my flesh, I will give you eternal life. But because the Jews did not have the spirit of discernment, they begin to argue, to say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They can't even recognize that it is the Christ that has been spoken about by the prophets. For us to be able to navigate further the terrain that you are not familiar with, living a life without some of the people who have been supporting you because they've succumbed to the, to, to, to the virus. We need God. Jesus Christ says he is the bread of life. Hallelujah. He's saying, you know, our fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they perished. But whosoever shall eat this bread is offering, his own flesh, drinking of his blood, we have got life everlasting. Hallelujah. How do we consume the body of Jesus Christ? One way of doing that is to live by the teachings Jesus Christ has taught us, as written in the Gospels. We eat the word of God. One writer says, I think it is Smith Wigglesworth. He says we ought as a people of God to consume the word of God until it consumes us. It becomes our nature. Hallelujah. So the bread of life, it is the daily bread that believers ought to live by. And it can, only buy, uh, it can only happen if you have received the wisdom of God. And the Bible clearly tells us that the beginning of, of, of all wisdom is the fear of God. Fearing God is to do His will. Hallelujah. More is expected of us. As I've already indicated that some of us, brothers and sisters, have succumbed to the global pandemic. But by God's grace, we are still here. And as we are still here, God still expects more from us. He expects more from us. As I conclude, no, we have shared the words of someone who is departing, saying his goodbyes to his son, Solomon. Dr. James Dobson didn't see the need to tell his son his last words at the point of death because he says in his book Life at the Age A Young Adult Guide to a Meaningful Future he says you know I do not know my son as to when the Lord will call me so it is best that I tell you now my last words to you because I do not want you to miss them because it might happen that you might not be next to my bed when that time comes so he says to his son make sure that you keep this appointment. May you be there on the great day. Hallelujah. Make sure you don't miss this appointment with me. I want you to be also there on the great day. And John Wesley, to the Methodist people, he says, also whilst he was on the deathbed, he says, the best of all, God with us. The best of all, God 
with us. So to the remnant, those that are going to survive by the grace of God, all these happenings, we say to you, be strong, take courage, and observe what the Lord your God requires. We know that you have been put uh, no, at a severe strain. And David also says in Psalm 27, 30, in spite of all that I'm going through, but I'm still confident of this one thing, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My soul wait for the Lord. Take heart and wait for the Lord. To the remnant, we are saying, walk in obedience to God and keep His decrees and commands, His laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses and the entire scripture. Do this so that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you go, you will succeed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Come, let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you for this message. The message, Father God Almighty, that you have prepared for those that you have saved. For those, of glory, that are going to survive your wrath as it has come upon the earth. And it has not come as a surprise, Almighty God. You have indicated that through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior, that these times shall come. Father God Almighty, signifying the return, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, give glory for those that will survive. We pray, Almighty God, that may we have the wisdom, King of glory, to be able to discern as the devil also, the father of all lies, King of glory, is flooding the earth with all kinds of lies that are made, King of glory, are meant, King of glory, to deceive your people. We pray, King of glory, that will grant us wisdom to discern what is true and what is false and be able, King of glory, to obey, Father God Almighty, you through the Holy Scriptures as given to us. We thank you, Father, for your grace over our lives. We pray, King of glory, for the week ahead. We invite your Holy Presence, Almighty God, creating us, Almighty God, that heart that, you, that will understand what you require of us, and be able to put to action the message you have given unto us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen and amen.